Hi, I'm John Ainsley from Doulos. This is First Steps with UVM Part 1, Hello World. In this video, I'm going to walk you through a simple, complete example of UVM code with the idea that you can download and run the code afterwards in your own simulator and get, get a good understanding yourself from what it all means by playing with it hands-on. This particular video is not an introduction to the main concepts in UVM or what it can do for you. If that's what you're interested in, I suggest you go and have a look at the easier UVM material on the Dulos website. So, here goes. Before we get into the details of the Hello World example, let me start by just giving you a very, very brief overview of UVM in case any of you are new to UVM. So UVM stands for the Universal Verification Methodology, which is primarily aimed at functional verification using System Verilog, although UVM was intended right from the early days also to be used in a mixed language environment, so there are already some mixed language implementations of UVM available. The big wins from using, using UVM are improved verification quality through using constrained random verification, test bench reuse, and know-how reuse, that is being able to reuse your UVM knowledge from project to project. UVM achieves these things by having a standard approach, allowing you to write consistent and uniform functional verification environments. Let's have a look at the big picture of how the various parts of UVM fit together. In UVM, you build up a verification environment from reusable verification components, also known as the agent in UVM. An agent has a standard architecture that consists of a sequencer on a, and a driver on the downstream path that is driving stimulus, constrained ran, random stimulus, into the design under test. And the agent then has a monitor on the upstream path that can do some low-level checking on the pin wiggling of the design under test and also distribute transactions to the rest of the verification environment for further checking and coverage collection. Multiple agents then get coordinated using so-called virtual sequences and scoreboards can be used for doing a checking across multiple interfaces. The overall verification environment or test bench then gets tweaked by individual tests, sometimes written by separate people or separate teams. So a test writer, who would generally be an application expert, would put together an individual test, which is typically a rather small piece of UVM code. And that test would then tweak and customise the behaviour of the complete verification environment in order to direct it in some way to try to test some particular feature of the design under test. So you can see here that reuse goes on at two different levels in UVM. First of all, reusable verification components or agents get brought into a project and instantiated within a verification environment. And those agents may well need to be customised to tweak their behaviour to the particular requirements of this verification environment. Then the overall verification environment gets customised according to the needs of a particular test. And UVM provides two different mechanisms for doing this customization, shown in orange on, these on this particular slide. That is the factory mechanism and the configuration database. So I'll be briefly referring to these mechanisms as we go through the, the detailed example. So now let's move on to UVM Hello World. So in spirit, UVM Hello World is trying to do what the well-known Hello World example does for the C program. That is to give you an extremely simple working example that shows you how to write a UVM program, if you will. And the UVM Hello World example tries to be faithful to the way that you would actually use UVM in practice on a real project, albeit trivialized and extremely simple. So we're going to see a design under test, which is a module instance, a system Verilog interface to pass information to and from that design under test, and then a class-based verification environment that consists of two classes, an environment class and a test class. So in a real project, you would separate out the tests from the environment. You'll see that in the Hello World example. The entire verification environment and test is class-based, that is written using system Verilog classes. 
It then communicates with the design under test using a system Verilog interface instance. And finally, the design under test itself is a system Verilog module instance. So here we see the first part of the code. On the left, we can see our interface and our module, both of which are empty in this Hello World example. On the right hand side, we can see the top level module. So the top level module contains, first of all, an instance of our interface, dot if, then an instance of the design under test, the dot, where you can see the interface port of the design under test connected to the interface instance. Then we move over to the first class in the class-based verification environment, that is the env. So we create our verification environment by writing our own class that extends UVM env. On these slides, I've highlighted all of the features that are taken from the UVM library itself in red. So UVM env is a class provided by the UVM base class library, and we're creating our own environment by extending that UVM env base class. So by doing that, we can reuse features from the UVM env base class in our own code as we build on top of it. So in the second line of this slide, we're registering our own environment with the UVM factory so we can take advantage of factory automation. Factory automation is one of the key features in UVM that's used to make code flexible and reusable. Again, if you want to know more about factory automation or any of the underlying concepts in UVM, I'd recommend you to have a look at the easier UVM material on the Doulos website. So UVM Component Utils is actually a macro that's being used to tell UVM about our component, if you will. Then comes a constructor. So function new is a constructor in System Verilog. And this particular constructor is serving the purpose of informing the UVM base class library of the parent of this particular component. So every component in UVM, and an env is an example of a component, every component forms part of the UVM component hierarchy. So every component apart from the top level component will have a parent. And the parent is passed as the second argument to the constructor. So you can here see here we've got function new. The first argument is a string name for this particular component. The second argument, the parent argument, is a reference to the parent of this component in the component hierarchy. And that parent reference is then passed through to the base class constructor. So super.new is a call to the constructor of the base class or the super class, as it's known in System Verilog, of this particular class. In other words, we're passing the reference to the parent through to the super class, which is UVM env, and that's actually registering with the UVM base class library the, the parent of this particular object. So coming back up to our simple diagram, so far we've seen the module, which is empty, the interface, which is empty, the source code for the env class, which is also empty apart from some boilerplate code to register it for factory automation and also to make it to, to indicate its location with the comp within the component hierarchy. Now we're going to have a look at the test class. So here we go. The test is another component. And in this case, we're creating the component my test by extending UVM test. UVM test is another um, class that extends UVM component. It's taken from the base class library and we extend UVM test to create our own test. So on the second line of the class, we're registering our own test with the UVM factory using the UVM component utils macro. Then we declare a regular member of our class, myenv. So menv is just a member or a property of this class that's going to be a reference to the environment. Then comes the standard boilerplate code for the constructor. So function new is just as we saw on the previous slide when we had a look at the myenv class. Then comes the first of the standard phase methods. So in UVM, phases are used to order the main things that happen during the execution of the simulation. 
So first comes the build phase, and it's during the build phase that any lower level components get instantiated within the UVM component hierarchy. So here we're overriding the built-in function build phase. You can see that the, the identity of the phase is actually being passed in as an argument to the build phase method. And then within build phase, we're calling the create method in order to create the low, lower level component. This is an example of a so-called factory method call in UVM. And in UVM, we would always strongly recommend that you use the factory method create in order to create any components or sequences or transactions. So in this case, we're using the factory to create our lower level component, the env component. And the benefit of using the factory is that it gives us a lot of flexibility. In fact, the factory mechanism is one of the keys to achieving runtime flexibility in UVM. So actually, when this build phase method is executed, we can override the type of the component that's actually created. So that rather than creating a vanilla myEnv component, we could actually subsequently extend myEnv, add some new functionality to myEnv, and then use the factory override method to replace myEnv with a specialized version when we actually execute simulation. Then after the build phase comes the run phase. Here you can see the standard run phase method. And in fact, it, it turns out that a component in UVM can have a number of different phase methods. The main phases are the build phase, the connect phase, and the run phase. But there are also a number of other housekeeping phases that you can add to each component. And it turns out that run phase is the only phase method that's a system Verilog task as opposed to a function. Because run phase is the only phase that can actually consume time. It's during the run phase that simulation time passes and events occur. Whenever we're running a simulation in UVM, one of the things that we have to think about is the end of test. In other words, when does the test end? When have we actually done enough simulation? When do we actually stop the test? Well, UVM deals with the end of test using the so-called objection mechanism. Any component in UVM that's busy, that's still doing stuff, signals to UVM that it's busy by raising an objection. And then when any component has finished whatever it was doing, it signals that by dropping the objection. So you can see here the first line of executable code within the run phase task is a call phase.raise objection that tells UVM that this particular test is busy. Then the very last thing it does is to call phase.drop objection, which tells UVM that this particular test isn't interested in prolonging the test any longer. So that's a very, very simple but representative example of the end of test mechanism in UVM. So within run phase, in this very, very simple hello world example, first thing we're doing is consuming some time, again, just to make this a representative example. So the hash 10 or pound 10 line is consuming 10 units of simulation time. And then we're actually printing out hello world. And we're doing so using the standard reporting mechanism in UVM, in particular the UVM info macro. So UVM info is one of four macros in UVM that we can use to print out messages, the other three being UVM warning, UVM error and UVM fatal. You'll recognise the four severity levels, info, warning, error and fatal in UVM. Then hello world is the actual text of the message that we want to write out. And the third argument to UVM info, that is UVM medium, that's the verbosity level of this particular information message. What you can do is to assign each individual information message a verbosity by passing a third argument to UVM info. And then you can set an overall verbosity level of the entire UVM simulation. And what happens is that any individual UVM info message with a, with a verbosity level that's higher than the global verbosity threshold that you set for the whole simulation gets filtered out. So that is, low verbosity info messages are, are more likely to get written out. High verbosity info messages are less likely to um, get written out, depending specifically on the overall verbosity level that you set. So there you go, that's the test, and it's the test in this case that's actually going to write out the hello world message. 
So we've seen two classes in our class-based verification environment, the ENV and the TEST. The ENV represents the large fixed part of the verification environment. The TEST represents the way that we execute that ENV for the purposes of this particular test. Now the best place to put classes in System Verilog is in a package that enables those classes to be reused. So in this very, very simple Hello World example, we're putting both of our classes, my env and my test, in a single package, my package, and we would typically put that package in a separate file. Then in order to compile the code, there's a couple of extra things we need to do. In our code, we're making use of some UVM macros, so we need to backtick include the file uvmmacros.svh. Also, we're using other type definitions out of the UVM class li base class library, UVM env and UVM test, so we need to import the contents of those symbols into our package. In this particular example, we're doing a wildcard import, that is, import UVM package colon colon star, which is importing any of the names that we've used out of that UVM package. So now we've seen the structural parts of the code, the interface, the module, and then the interface instance and module instance in our top level module. We've also seen the source code of the class-based verification environment. The last thing we've got to do to complete this Hello World example is to instantiate the class-based ver verification environment from our top level system Verilog module. And we do that in a straightforward procedure. So, in going, so going over to the right hand side of the screen to the module and reading from top down, first thing we're doing is importing the contents of the standard package, UVM package, colon colon star. Then we're importing the contents of our own package, my package, colon colon star. That means importing the symbols um, my env and my test. Then we're instantiating the interface and the dot. Then we have a system Verilog procedure, the initial block, and that calls run test, which is a standard global function in UVM. And run test is being passed the name of the particular test that we want to run. So now we can look at the complete source code of our trivial Hello World example. On the left hand side we've got the module based stuff, on the right hand side we've got the classes which we've put in a separate file in a package. So the module top it contains an instantiation of the DUT interface, it contains an instantiation of the DUT and we've connected the DUT interface to the interface port on the DUT. We've then called run test my test and that's running the test which is a class on the right hand side. So the my test class has been registered with the UVM factory using the macro UVM component utils. And because of that, the factory knows about my test, if you will. In fact, the UVM component utils macro actually takes the name my test, wraps it up in quotes as a text string, and then pops that text string into the factory. So that over on the left hand side, when we have the call run test my test, a registry within the factory looks up the string my test within the UVM factory, works out the identity of the top level test, and then actually makes an instantiation of an object of type my test. We then go through the UVM phasing mechanism, starting off with the build phase. So during the build phase, the build phase method of each of our standard UVM components is getting called and the build phase of the test is instantiating the env. So you can see the call my env type id create within the build phase of my test. That call is actually creating an instance of the my env object through the UVM factory. Then we'd move on to the run phase. The run phase would execute, raise an objection so that simulation doesn't finish immediately, or rather the UVM test doesn't finish immediately. Run phase then consumes some time, prints out hello world using the standard error reporting mechanism, and then drops the objection, allowing the UVM test to end. Let's now have a look at the command line that we can use to actually execute some of the popular System Verilog simulators. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is to work out where your UVM installation is. And broadly speaking, you have two options. You can either download and install UVM yourself, or you can use the UVM installation that's quite possibly built into the System Verilog simulator you're using. As at this point in time, all of the main um, 
system Verilog simulator vendors are actually providing UVM installation as, as part of their simulation installation. So if you want to install UVM yourself, you download it from the Accelera Systems Initiative website. I'll show you the URL of that later on. And then you set the UVM home environment variable to point to your installation. And you can see the reference to UVM home on this slide. You then run your particular simulator using whatever command is supplied by your simulator vendor, possibly with some vendor specific command line flags. And then you identity, identify the include directory where your UVM include files are installed. Then the directory containing the source of the UVM package. So you can see in the lower box on this slide where we've got four lines of code. First, first of all, we're identifying the include directory. Then the source file uvmdpi.cc. So there's actually some C code that you need to compile. Then uvm.sv, that's the source code of the standard UVM package. And finally, last thing on the command line, uvm hello world.sv, that's our own particular source file. So it turns out that right now we can use identical command line arguments with all of the popular system Verilog simulators. The only thing that needs to be different is the actual name of the simulator. If you're using the installation of UVM that's built into your simulator, then you won't necessarily need to include the UVM source code when you compile. Things will be a little simpler than shown here. So here we can see the standard output that's popping up when we run our UVM simulation. In fact, the only thing that's shown on this slide is all of the standard output that comes from the UVM class library. You'll also see some simulator specific preamble and postamble before and after the text that you can see here. So we start with the standard copyright messages. Then there's an info message telling us which particular test we're running. Then a line that come, that's printing out the hello world message. So reading from left to right on the hello world line, we can see that it's an info message as opposed to a warning or an error. Then comes the name of the source file, uvm hello world.sv. Then the line number, line 70. The message is coming out at simulation time 10. Then UVM test top. UVM test top is actually the component instance name of the top level test. Then the actual string of the message, hello world. Then comes another info message telling us that we've dropped the final objection. So we have a message from UVM object, objection.svh at time 10 telling us that our test is over because the final objection has been dropped. Then we've got a message telling us that we're ready to proceed from the run phase to the extract phase, which is one of those housekeeping phases that I mentioned earlier. Then comes a report summary. So we've got three info messages. One info message to tell us the test that we're running. The second is the hello world message. The third is the info message telling us that we've reached the end of the test. So what next? Well, you can download UVM itself from the Accelera Systems Initiative website. You can download the Hello World source code for this particular video from the Dulos website. You will have to register if you've not already registered on this area of the Dulos website. You can also get other UVM collateral, including the easier UVM tutorial material that I mentioned previously from the Dulos website. So at Dulos we deliver training classes throughout the USA, Europe and Asia across a range of topics including hardware design and verification, FPGA technology, embedded software, ARM processor technology, system C and DSL, and of course system Verilog and UVM. Do visit us at dulos.com for more details.